Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we're going to start a playthrough of Deep Rock Galactic. This is a one to four player cooperative game. You are dwarves that are in a cave trying to gather resources, complete whatever objective you need to do and get out before the bugs take you down or you run out of time from the swarm track. <laughs> This game is based off of a computer game. Now, I haven't played that, but uh, when I saw this, this just looked super cool. You get to be dwarves, you're taking out aliens like nobody's business, and you're mining for resources. Who doesn't like that? <laughs> What we'll do is a quick setup and then we'll jump into our playthrough. Don't forget, this is a relatively new game, so if I make any errors and I miss them in editing, I'll put them in Klingon subtitles, so turn those on. If you have them on, they should be popping up right now saying, hey, welcome to the Klingon channel, so make sure to have those on. Okay, without further ado, let's jump in, set up, and start our playthrough. The game comes with five different decks of cards. We have our supply deck here. There's nine of those cards. Just shuffle them up. We have our rock and stone cards. These are one-time use cards you can use at any time. You can help other players with them. Really fun. You can play them outside of actions. You'll shuffle those up to be ready to go. I can't believe I forgot to say this. Bill painted all of these minis except for the grunts and the stalagmites. So if you like his painting, I'll put a link in the description below. You can contact him to help uh, paint your minis. They look phenomenal. And I, I mean, he put rust and dirt on this. I mean, look at that. Doesn't that look amazing? So this is where we're going to store all of the resources that we mine, as well as all the different exploration tokens we pick up. We have two more decks of cards over here we shuffle up, your swarm deck and your event deck. We also have your throwable deck, so shuffle that up and each dwarf will get to draw one of these to start the game. Our next part of setup is choosing which mission you want to play. I wanted to show you a more advanced mission, so we're going to play mission six, the cave of the Praetorian. Scanners have located additional cave systems with various riches just waiting to be collected. Unfortunately, a territorial Praetorian ferociously guards this area, so you'll need to stay alert if you want to pass through with all your limbs still attached. Eliminating it will save you a lot of trouble later. One more thing, while you're down there, you might as well retrieve some flowers. We're not just here to kill random bugs after all. <laughs> So we have a special rule. The Praetorian has constructed its nest in a small cave to the northeast, which isn't connected to the drop zone. The creature will be oblivious to your presence and won't activate until you break through to its cave. I'll show you what that means in a second. You can see here our objectives. We need to eliminate the Praetorian and collect three of those blooms. Okay, And our mission-specific event, so if ever we see that on one of the event cards, it says here, increase swarm threat by one. All creatures activate even if you didn't trigger a swarm. At the top of the next page, you can see the resources that are going to be placed out on the board randomly, as well as the different pickup tokens. We have from left to right, we have a loot bug there that could potentially help us. We have two barley bulbs and the three apoka blooms. Remember, we have to collect the three apoka blooms. Here is how we need to set up the board itself. You can see these different resource icons. What we're going to do with that gold and the nitro, we'll randomly drop them out and then place them out on the board. We could potentially uh, try and collect those during the game. We also have a couple creatures that start out on the board. Now these three will not start on the board. I will not put them there because they will not activate until we actually connect the uh, cave that we're in to this one. Once we connect it, then I will put them on on the board and we'll have to deal with them. You can see the different resources we've placed out on the board. We also have all those pickup tokens, so I've randomly shuffled them up. I'll place one on each of these face down tiles. Now, there are multitudes of those tiles, so I've randomly grabbed three of them. I don't know which ones they are. Once we connect this cave, uh, the cave that we're in, to these, we'll flip them over. So cool how that works. This is where we ultimately need to get to, to be able to take out that Praetorian. We also have a couple exploration or pickup tokens on the tile that we're on, and there are two enemies on the board already. We have a web spinner here and just a little tiny grunt. We also have a stalagmite that we've placed here. There are two what they call tunnel exits, although I don't really call them exits because they're entrances for where the enemies will spawn. <laughs> uh, so I see them more as entrances. These are the tunnel entrances for the different types of aliens. We need to choose how difficult we want the game to be, and that will determine where we start the swarm threat at, at either at one, two, or three. If we started at four or five, we also spawn additional uh, enemies out on the board. I'm definitely not doing that. I haven't won this scenario. I've gotten close. So I'm going to start at the easiest level. We're going to start at level one, putting the swarm marker here. If that swarm marker ever reaches this space and then needs to move another time, we lose the game because we ran out of time. 
When playing solo, you can choose to play it two different ways. You can play with just one dwarf and then a different character called Bosco who immediately activates after you. He's kind of like a little helper. But the fun part about this game to me are the dwarves and all the unique abilities that they have. So I'm going to play with three dwarves on my own as if they are three different characters. So there are a total of four. I'm playing with the gunner, I'm playing with the engineer, and I'm playing with the scout. The uh, driller, I am not playing with. Even though he is a ton of fun, I just think that we can only play with three, so I randomly grab three. <laughs> How you know where you place them out is you're going to look at the dropship location and you're going to match the color slash symbol for your dwarf and place your dwarf there. So that's how I know where to place them. The game comes with this nifty two-sided board which will tell you all the different stats of the different hostile enemies in this game. All the other ones on here essentially we could see in this game which is kind of fun. You don't know which ones you're going to face. And I do have the expansion so we could see the goo bomber or the menace as well. This board is used for two different things. One, it tells you the stats of all the different enemy types, but two, it tells you the order in which they will activate whenever the enemies are activated. Let's talk quick about our round summary, and then I will show you the dwarves and how we set them up as we are going through their turns. So we'll start with the action phase. Carry out three actions, or one if you're stunned, in any order. If you're knocked over, you have to spend your first two actions just to get back up. Uh, those different actions are you can either move, attack, do a pickaxe action, use your throwable, overclock your secondary weapon, resupply, exchange supplies, assist, or play rock and stone events. But when you play a rock and stone card, that of course is free. And then the event phase, you're going to draw an event card. After you do that, you're just going to go to the next dwarf and keep doing that until we either complete our objective and get back to the dropship, or uh, all of us are unconscious. If we're all unconscious, then we lose. Or that swarm threat goes all the way to the max and it needs to be moved a, uh, another time. The first dwarf will activate is the engineer. Look at these player boards. They're um, inlaid player boards. I love that. I love how they look. Oh, the art is awesome. Yeah, so cool. So now each dwarf has unique abilities, but let's first look at the weapons that he's got. The engineer's primary weapon is the grenade launcher. This uses explosive dice, so those are the red dice. Now, the different types of dice don't really matter unless you're looking at resistances. For an example, an exploder alien is resistant to the explosive dice, but it's not to the fire dice. Anyway, so that's, that's why the different dice matter. It depends upon the resistances of the actual aliens which I think is a really cool way of doing it but if I get one hit for this versus one hit for the bullet dice they're all going to do one damage it just depends upon resistances whether it'll actually go through so what this shows us is when we activate it we have a range of four we can roll one red die and hit in a triangle uh, location like that or we can use the AP grenade we can actually roll two red dice and pick one to activate but then we're only hitting one now over here you can see we actually have ammo in this game and you can run out of ammo and that's part of what makes this game so awesome. You have to manage that. You can't just keep shooting everything down plus you'll run out of time. <laughs> so we start with five of the primary uh, ammo and then each dwarf gets to choose a secondary weapon. His secondary weapon I chose from is the Subata I-20 semi-automatic. Semi Why I like it is you can attack it's only one green bullet die but guess what it's a free action range five. So you can spend an ammo roll and it doesn't even cost one of your three actions. However, your secondary weapon, you only have three open spots for uh, your ammo. Once that's out, you have to get some more. However, if ever you overclock it, so that would mean you'd spend some gold, you can flip this, and then you might get an additional benefit. For this one, it's uh, you get to roll two dice uh, when you do that free attack, and it unlocks these two spots, so you can actually have five secondary ammo. So you want to think of each gun can only use one type of ammo. Down here, this denotes how much health our dwarf has. Every dwarf has the same amount of health, one, two, three, four, five. Once that's cleared out, you're unconscious, and someone has to come and either help you, or if it's your turn and you are unconscious, you just increase the swarm threat by one and move to the next player's turn. The engineer has a couple special abilities. He has the sentry gun. That's this. Bill did a great job painting that. It looks so awesome. Don't you love that? Oh my gosh. So for one ammo, he can place that out adjacent to him. And then that within range three, any enemy that either activates or moves, it'll take a pot shot at it, rolling one die and it doesn't use any ammo. 
could potentially kill some of those grunts because those grunts only have one health. He also has a platform gun and it generates platforms that are stable enough to walk on. So he can spend one action to place up to three platforms on any deep pit spaces within your line of sight. And it doesn't matter if these spaces have creatures on them or not, but then people can walk through those deep spaces, this deep pit spaces. All of the aliens can walk through those because they're essentially walking on the walls. The dwarves normally can't unless we put out some of these platforms. Finally, the grenade launcher can shoot over obstacles, except for walls, to strike targets on the other side, which is kind of cool because usually all things block line of sight. That would include dwarves or other aliens or stalagmites. Uh, the only thing that will not block line of sight is grunts because they're so small, they don't uh, block any line of sight for any enemies or us. Each dwarf starts with one throwable. We have the incendiary grenade. We'll roll two of fire dice and apply the hits to each target. This T is telling us that we need to make sure that we have line of sight to that T spot, and then it will hit in those other two adjacent locations, regardless of whether we can see there or not, range four. We all also grab one rock and stone card, and we have rock and stone forever. All dwar dwarves roll and use one pickaxe die. Our engineer has a total of three actions. His first action, he's going to use his platform grenade. He's going to drop out three platforms. So I think I'm going to place one here. I'm going to place one here. It has to be within line of sight, so things can't be blocking those spaces. And uh, I don't see any blockage, so I think we're fine. So we're going to go one, two, and three. That way we can get ourselves close to that pickup token here and close to this pickup token. Line of sight is quite easy in this game. You look at any part of the hex that you're in, as long as nothing blocks line of sight to the part of the hex that you're trying to look at. So for an example, we can certainly see this grunt right now, but if we had this stalagmite right here, that would then block our line of sight and we could not see the grunt. Next, I think we're going to use our semi-automatic weapon. That is rolling one of these bullet dice. It's a free action. We have to spend one of the ammo that we have. We have three in total, so we're going to go down to two. We're going to take a shot because it needs to be within range five. One, two, three, four, five of that uh, grunt. So it only has one health, no resistances. So as long as we get a hit here, which we did, we just took out that grunt. That grunt's toast. Normally, attacking like that would cost us an action, but we don't have to spend it because of the weapon itself. Our second action, we're going to move. In order to move, you can move up to three spaces. You can move through your dwarves, but not other creatures. You can't move through stalagmites, but you can even move on to these pickup tokens, no problem. The moment you move next to them, though, I'm going to move one, two. You can pause and flip them over. So let's see what this is. Oh, that is a barley bulb. So if you walk into that space, you can pick it up for free and it can be used to brew all kinds of tasty beverages at the Abyss Bar. When you collect one, draw a rock and stone card for yourself and then discard the token. So that's how you can get some more of those rock and stone cards. I do have one more movement, so why not? Let's move right onto that space and we will pick that up. We just found the Fortune and Glory card. It allows us to double the result of one of the loot dice rolls, and you'll see when we roll that die as we play. For my third action, I will spend one of the primary ammo so I can put out my sentry gun. We'll place that on our platform right here. That way, one, two, it's within range two of this one, and one, two, three, it's only one away from this tunnel. I like it. Now I could do any free actions. I have that gun. I could shoot two more times at that web spitter. The web spitter has two health and it does have a potential of actually sticking you with the web so you can't move. Somewhat appealing, but I'd have to spend all the ammo for my semi-automatic. So I don't think I'm ready for that. Uh, if it activates, this will take a pot shot at it and maybe damage it a little. So I think I'm just going to hold. That will end our engineer's turn. We now will draw an event card. We have their closing in. Increase the swarm threat by one. If this didn't trigger a swarm, activate all creatures. We'll move our swarm threat up by one. We did not hit this symbol. Every time you hit this symbol, you then have a swarm and you draw one of those swarm cards. So we did not trigger a swarm, but all the creatures on the board, which is just the web spitter, will activate. I just want to show you, look at Bill's ability to paint ridiculously awesome. I love these guys, these goo spitters. I don't want to deal with them in the game, but I love looking at them painted. We can see here web spitters have two health, they have a range of five, and they move three. They'll roll two black dice, and if they get an exclamation point, they will web up whoever they attack. 
It says here, gosh, it reflects terribly. Sorry. The web spitter fires damaging and sticky web projectiles from afar. Those can web a dwarf, immobilize him on his next turn, and leave him wide open to attacks. Webbed dwarves can carry out all actions on their next turn except move actions. Finally, we can see there are no resistances for them. Uh, unlike the exploder here, you can see they have an explosion uh, resistance. The bugs will always target the closest dwarf, or unfortunately, if I had thought about this, the sentry gun. <laughs> Whichever one's closest, it's going to attack. If there was a tie, it'll always go towards the dwarf that most recently activated. Unfortunately, because I wasn't thinking, the sentry gun is the closest, so the web spitter will attack the sentry gun. Which is good in a way, because that means we won't get hurt, but that means the sentry gun's going to get one pot shot at that, and then likely is going to get destroyed. So, it will be able to attack because this web spitter is activating. So think of it getting ready to attack, the sentry gun sees it, because it's within range 3, and attacks and deals one damage. Wow, I can't believe I got a one there. So we'll place one of these here. Remember, they have two health. But then we'll roll the two creature dice. And if we get any of the symbols that look like that, that means that uh, that sentry gun is toast. And yes, we've got two of them. <laughs> so that sentry gun did its duty and took the damage so no one else had to. We'll now move to the scout's turn. The scout's primary weapon is the M1000 Classic, but the game came with alternative guns and I decided to use an alternative for him. He's going to use the Deep Core GK2 Assault Rifle. <laughs> Each class has an alternative weapon, and you can choose whether to use it or not. So we have here a burst fire. You'll roll two dice and pick one, or you can go full automatic. And these are armor-piercing uh, bullets. So almost all of the different alien types are not resistant to these. They usually go through. There's like one or two that are. So these are usually really good shots. Uh, this one can be full automatic. It costs two ammo to use it, but you roll two dice and get to use them to attack. Range five. His secondary weapon is the experimental plan. Plasma Igniter. <laughs> the scout is light-footed, so at the end of a move action, the scout may carry out a ranged or throwable attack, and this does not cost an action, but you must still pay ammo. He also has the grappling hook ability. The scout can move through creatures, stalagmites, and deep pits without issue, and can't end, but he can't end his move on them. Uh, and you're still limited to three spaces per movement, including deep pits and creature spaces. So you can't move six and do three and end in a deep space, a deep pit space, and then keep moving. He has the flare shot, so he can spend one action to place one flare token on any space within line of sight. Dwarves may reroll one die per attack against any creature that is on or next to that flare token. And then you take it back at the beginning of your next turn. His Rock and Stone card is for Carl. Play at any time, lose one health, then discard the current event and ignore its effects. He also has the Electrocution Grenade. Roll a bullet die and apply it to each target inside the blast radius. Regardless of the die result, they all become stunned, which means the next time they activate, they don't. And just so you know, there is friendly fire in this game, so if that would hit a dwarf, the dwarf would be stunned too. Our first action, we'll do the move action. We'll move one, two, three, because remember, we can move through dwarves and that sentry gun, but we cannot move through creatures. We can now take a free attack because of our special ability. This uh, web spitter only has one health. It is definitely within range five. Yeah, let's do our main weapon. So we're going to have to spend one primary ammo, and then let's give this a roll and see how we do. Okay, that is one damage. That means this web spitter is gone. Our second action, we'll move one here, and then we can flip over this pick up token. Oh, this is one of the blossoms that we need. So action two, I'm actually just gonna do this just to show you, or I should say movement two. We can move here. Normally people can't do that, but we have grappling hooks. So we can use that, uh, the grappling hooks, and basically walk through these deep pit spaces. These usually block movement, so you can't do that. Uh, but we're able to, we just can't end our movement there. So we'll do, I don't really wanna do that. <laughs> I wanna do movement two here immediately pick this up. We'll then open up our mule and we'll drop it in there. So we've got one of the three that we need. Our third movement will move here and we're going to be incredibly risky. <laughs> You don't generally want to end your movement or end your turn over here right next to a tunnel. But I do think I'm going to do a pickaxe action. Now, there's lots of different actions you can do with a pickaxe. You can do a mining action and try and collect a mineral from an adjacent wall. 
You can try and farm, harvest a loot bug, a red sugar or alien egg on your space or an adjacent space. You can actually attack with that if you don't want to spend ammo, but it has to be adjacent. You can dig out a passage by destroying a wall adjacent to your space. That's what we're going to try and do. And we can destroy a stalagmite adjacent to your space. And unlike all the other actions that you do, this one, if I roll more than one pickaxe symbol, I can split that depending upon which actions I want to take. I'm going to start trying to pickaxe my way and connect to this tunnel. Think of this black area as a wall, okay? So these are pits, these are big holes in the ground, but this black space is a wall. And for us to get through there and connect to this location, we need to dig our way through this. Now, if we had the digger, he literally could just walk here and create a path, but we can't do that, we don't have the digger. We have to actually use our pickaxe die, and let's see what we get, and we get nothing. <laughs> We dig through that wall and get nothing. So unfortunately, we did not uh, even dig a hole. Dang. That'll end our scout's turn. We'll draw an event card. They go boom. Activate all creatures. Well, there aren't any on the board. If no creatures are in play, place an exploder at exit one instead. Look at this awesome exploder. Bill really outdid himself. I love how these guys look. They look just like they're about to explode. Exit one is, of course, right next to our scout. <laughs> at least it doesn't attack yet. Our third and final dwarf is the gunner, and this is my son's favorite one. You'll see why. Our primary weapon is the powered minigun. You roll three green dice, looking for bullets, but then successive attacks are free actions, but you do have to pay the ammo cost. But yeah, my son runs out of ammo really quick on this, just taking out all of the different aliens. So much fun. Range five. Our secondary weapon is the jury-rigged boomstick, rolling two armor-piercing uh, dice, and you get to choose one. The gunner's ability is zipline launcher. When next to a deep pit, you can spend one action and place one or more zipline tokens on empty spaces across the pit in a straight line from the gunner's location. Any dwarf can use the move action to move up or down the deployed zip line that only costs one movement. And you can always pick some up that you've previously placed and put them uh, in the new locations. You have a total of three zip lines. We also have the shield generator. I've used this so many times. The shield generator is awesome. Spend one action to place the shield token on your space or an empty space next to you. The shield protects all dwarves on its space and on any adjacent spaces. It can withstand attacks from all types of creatures, even leeches, uh, leeches grabbers, and other aerial surprises. Those are event cards. Also, creatures cannot move into any of the shielded spaces unless they were already there when the shield was activated. This will then be discarded at the start of your turn. You will get a new shield the next time you collect any supplies from the supply pod or start a new mission. We'll talk about supply pods as we play, but we potentially can use resources to bring a supply pod down so we can replenish our ammo. Because as you can imagine, we're going to run out of ammo. Our rock and stone card is, I think we might actually get out of this alive. Distribute up to two health from the general supply to other dwarves, so not himself. And we have a cluster grenade. Now you can see we have to pick a spot and everything around it would take damage, rolling two red dice, and apply them to each space around the target, so not actually where we're throwing it. Right now, what we could do is take a pot shot at this exploder. Here's the deal. If we hit that, though, and that explodes, it's going to hurt our buddy right here. And he might do that anyways and actually hurt his own allied creatures uh, if we have to spawn any and then he activates. So I'm actually thinking of not attacking him. I'm thinking instead of getting our gunner into position to try and help uh, delve our way over to that next cave location. So he's going to spend his first action moving one. Well, actually, we got to go this way. One, two, three. Uh, yeah, I think that's the best. Thanks, engineer. Now, once we've moved off of the uh, drop ship, we're going to flip it over. And until we complete the objective, that's going to stay like this. Once we complete the objectives, which is killing that Praetorian and picking up, now it's only two more of those flower blooms, we'll flip this over and we all have to get back here to win. Or if at least one of us gets back there, we have a partial win. <laughs> I'm actually thinking for my third movement, I'm going to move here. So I would have moved one, two, three. Action two, I'm going to create the zip line just because I want to, and I think it's going to look kind of cool. So what we can do from our space is use our zip line tokens to go across like this. And then if we wanted to for our third action, but it's kind of stupid that both of us being next to this exploder, we could use one movement to move here. But this will hopefully allow us to do that once we get rid of that exploder. So it's the question of, should I just shoot the thing? <laughs> I want to just shoot the thing, but I probably shouldn't. For our third action, this doesn't seem great, but I think I'm just going to move back to here 
because that then gives me the option of going this way or this way when it's my next turn. Okay, let's draw an event card. We have our mission specific event. Follow the event description specific to this mission. That will be increasing the swarm threat uh, by one. And if the enemies do not activate, all creatures will activate. We have not hit a swarm yet, but we are two away. That just means this exploder will blow itself up and then deal damage to everything that's adjacent to it equal to one explosion die. And we'll roll it up, and that's terrible. That hit our scout for two damage. Ow. Remember, we only have five health, so that's two health down. We're back to the engineer's turn. We're going to do our first action and try and mine this stalagmite. To do that, we'll roll the pickaxe die. Oh, we got two. Well, there's nowhere else we can use the pickaxe symbol for. If there were enemies next to us, we could attack them with one. Uh, if we were next to an empty space, we could hack through it. But no, all we get to do is remove this stalagmite, and then we're going to roll the loot die. Let's see if we get something from it. We will get one gold. With that, I think we'll discard fortune and glory and double that result, so we'll actually gain two gold. We'll put both gold in the mule, and what you can do with gold is two different things. One, you can spend up to three nitra or using gold in place of nitra to call a supply pod down, which will have different types of ammo, and it can have health on it that you can potentially grab, but you can also use gold to overclock your secondary weapons. I'm probably going to do that. Maybe not right away, though. Action two, we're going to move. We can move three spaces, one, two, and zip line for only one movement to three. And then we'll try and start mining this area so we can connect ourselves to this cave location. And we roll and we get one of the pickaxe symbols. So that means we'll use one of these and we'll place it down adjacent to where we are. Do I want to? You know, I might actually place it here. The nice thing about placing this here is we can now choose whether we want to mine this way and connect to this cave or connect to this cave set. There is one catch to connecting to the bigger cave set. You see how this one is two tiles large? Whenever we connect to one of these, we'll flip both of them. And yes, they have enemies in them already, and we don't know what they are. So when you flip two, it could get bad. That's our three actions. Let's draw an event card. We have another mission-specific event. That's just going to increase the swarm threat by one. You might be going, but Colin, right now no enemies are out. This seems pretty easy. Yeah, that won't happen for long. Remember, I started on the easiest mode, going as far back as possible. So we have this little bit of time, because soon we won't have that little bit of time. Our scout is our next dwarf to go. He will move one, two, three, moving here for action one. Action two, let's do a little mining. Let's connect at least one of those, so long as we can actually do it. Oh, we got two. So technically, we could connect both of them, but I don't think I want to do that. Instead, I'm going to say that I mined this space and this space. That just gives us a little more leeway for us to move around, because when you make it connected so tightly, sometimes you can get stuck behind each other. <laughs> So now this tile is connected to the current cave that we're in. We need to flip it over. What we have here on this map tile, this is a weapon upgrade. So when we walk next to it, we'll flip that over. And if we walk into that space, we can pick it up for free. We also now know where we can place this pickup token that potentially could be the flower. We'll place it here. We can see a stalagmite needs to be placed here. And then we have two symbols of two different types of creatures. This looks like a web spitter to me uh, those guys are brutal because they stop your movement and then we have a mactera spawn bill really outdid himself on these guys these guys look terribly awesome we'll place that one right here and i'm realizing i didn't show you the web spitter look at this guy i love the purple on him his face just looks amazing both the Mactera Spawn and Web Spitter have two health. The Mactera Spawn is resistant twice to the pickaxe, so you can't really hit him uh, with a melee attack, because good luck. <laughs> You're going to need more than two of those. And is slightly resistant to fire. Fortunately, our primary weapon doesn't use fire, so I could do a move and an attack because he can do an attack for free. I just have to be careful because our scout only has three health. But what the heck, let's do it. We're going to move one two we're gonna pick up this weapon upgrade this is a reroll upgrade i definitely want to put that on to my assault rifle and i am going to attack with my assault rifle and i'm going to use two ammo because i'm going to do the full automatic rolling two armor piercing bullets and that means i get to reroll one of those too if i want before i do that attack i do still have one movement so i think i'm going to move here for my third to get out of the way for my other dwarves that want to run in here and now I'm going to roll two dice. I get to get a free reroll if I'd like, but I don't need to. 
to hit. That web spitter only has two health. We'll take him out before he has time to activate. Just what I wanted. That does mean, though, it's time for an event card. And we have another mission-specific event. So we're going to increase the swarm threat by one, and that will hit a swarm. And then we're going to activate all enemies. This is the symbol that means that you have triggered a swarm. So then we draw one swarm card, and we get to see what we have. We have slice and dice. Place one slasher at exit two, and two grunts each at exit one and three. Now, there is a third exit on one of these random tiles. You know, these ones will be placed out, so we potentially could find exit three, but right now we don't have exit three on the board, so we just have to place two grunts at exit one, and then one slasher at exit two. Here we have the slashers. You know that thing's going to go right through any sort of dwarf armor. We'll place the slasher right here at tunnel two, and then unfortunately, two of these little grunts are going to show up at tunnel one, and whenever you have the tunnel space filled, you always place the next uh, creature as close as possible to another dwarf. And remember, these deep pit spaces don't matter to them. They can walk through them no problem. So both of these are now adjacent to our engineer. We now will activate all four of our creatures, starting with the grunts. When creatures activate, they can either move or attack. They can't do both. These two are already adjacent to our engineer, so they're both going to attack. We'll grab a single die for them. Now, the exclamation point for them is nothing. For all other enemies, it's going to be something. But for them, it's nothing because they are the weakest ones. So for the first one, we'll roll, and it's an exclamation point, so no damage. The second one will roll, and it, it does one hit. So that means we have one damage to the engineer. Engineer is down to four health. We can see on this chart that the Mactera spawn is farther up than the Slasher. So the Mactera spawn will attack next, rolling one die. If they get an exclamation point, it can actually stun. It has a range three, move three. And then the slasher here rolls two dice. You can see here with an exclamation point actually knocks down a dwarf. You're not unconscious, but you have to take two actions to stand back up. Or another dwarf adjacent to you can spend one action to have you stand up. Uh, and then they both have some resistances, as you can see. We got pretty lucky over here because this Mactera spawn, one, two, three, is range four right now from our scout. So it's going to have to move one. It'll move one here. And then it has a line of sight. I believe since it's flying, none of these things block line of sight. It can go right over it anyways, because think of it as if it's flying in the air. So it's in line of sight. The moment it's at its maximum range, it's going to stop moving. So even though it had two more movement, it's just going to stay there because it's in range of our dwarf. The slasher can also move three, one, two, three, or one, two, three, one, two, three. So the one that most recently went was the engineer. So one, two, three. It's going to move here. <laughs> Look at that. Just ready to take that engineer out. It's now our gunner's turn, and he is going to have some fun over here. He's going to spend his first ammo using his powered minigun. He is going to target this grunt within range. One, two, three. Now I get to show you how this works when there's multiple enemies and you're rolling multiple dice. In this game, you're actually going to assign dice to st specific spaces. So if I hit with that one and I have another hit, I can then spread it to this one so long as it is within range and in line of sight. All three of these are definitely within range and line of sight. The only kicker is the slasher is resistant to the bullets, so I need to deal two damage in one hit to do any damage to it, and it actually has two health. So that's why I'm starting with the grunts. This is our first attack action. We're going to roll them up. Oh, that's terrible. Two blanks and a hit. So that means this grunt is gone, but that's it. Now, we are not even going to spend a second action. We're just going to spend another ammo and do that again because this is our powered minigun. We're just letting it go. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Oh, I can just see it. I can just see him seeing these creatures coming out, and he's just ready to blow them out. So here's the next roll. We're starting with that grunt. Oh, look at that. That's three hits. So the first one is going to be for that grunt. That grunt is toast, so gone. And then the other two dice are going to be for the slasher. Unfortunately, that slasher is not dead. And i got to put all this back. This is the problem with me rolling on the board. Sorry about that. Uh, the slasher has resistance of one for these bullets. So we just dealt one damage to the slasher, not two. We could spend one more ammo and attack again, all for that one action. But I would need to get two hits. I think I'm going to hold there. I'm For my action two, I'm going to use... Oh, I can't. My jury rig boomstick, I need range two. And I'm way less than two range. Uh, do I just spend the ammo? I think I'm just going to spend the ammo and hope I can do it. So this is my third ammo already. So this is what's so great about this game. Do I spend the ammo? Do I not? <laughs> I'm going to use my third ammo already. I'm going to pick these up. I need two hits. 
to be able to take this slasher out. But then that only took one action. Uh, we can do it, right? We can do it. We can do it. Oh, that's only one hit. Oh, do we spend another ammo? <laughs> no. No. Yes? No, we're not going to do that. That was action one. That was terrible. Action two, I think our gunner is going to be risky. One, two. He's going to move right here. Action three, he's going to then use his jury-rigged boomstick, spending one of his secondary ammo. That's going to put him down to two. Uh, but then he can attack with two of these armor-piercing uh, dice, and he gets to choose one. And yeah, both of them are hits, so it doesn't matter which one we do. That will take out this slasher, and that protects our engineer. <gasps> oh, that was great. That was our three actions. Let's draw our event card. We have fast critters. Increase swarm threat by one. If this didn't trigger a swarm, which it won't, all creatures move and attack. Now, the one that's out doesn't need to move, so it'll just attack. We'll move our swarm threat up by one. We'll roll one creature die for that Mactera spawn attacking our scout. And it's one damage. Our scout's down to two health. That gunner might need to use the rock and stone card soon for health. It's now our engineer's turn, and I can't believe I'm thinking of doing this, but I've always run out of time in this scenario, so I think I've got to keep pushing. There's only one enemy over there. I think our scout can take care of it so long as he doesn't die, and he'll activate next. So I think I'm going to try and... Uh, I think it's actually called landscaping. I'm going to try and connect the next two caves to our cave. So we're going to roll... And we get one of our pickaxes. That's all we need. We'll drop this right here. And that means we've now connected our double cave system. Well, this is going to get very interesting. We just had a spitball infector and a brood nexus show up, as well as yet another Mactera spawn. This spitball infector has a range of seven and five health. However, it cannot move. Uh, but when it attacks it, it rolls one die. And one thing that's cool about this one is if you do take it out, you actually get to draw a rock and stone card. But it's very resistant. Uh, well, it's resistant to stun. You can't stun it because it's like a plant. <laughs> Gosh, didn't Bill do amazing? Look at this thing. It looks amazing. This brood nexus also has five health. It doesn't attack or doesn't move either. But what it does is we're going to roll two dice and every exclamation point is going to spawn a grunt next to it. So it's going to spawn enemies and enemies and enemies until we get rid of it. What's kind of crazy is that a stalagmite just happened to be in this space blocking so that we cannot attack that spitball infector. But the spitball infector can't attack us either because this is blocking its line of sight. Kind of good, kind of annoying. <laughs> We've done one action. I think action two, we're just going to, are we just going to move one? Yeah, I mean, I guess. We're just going to move one here. And then action three, I don't want to do this yet. I'm thinking that we'll spend another ammo and we'll put our sentry gun down a second time. Uh, hopefully it can help us. So we'll put it right here and we'll spend another ammo. We're down to only three ammo on our primary weapon. That will complete our activation. We'll then draw an event card. We have glowing walls. Place one gold in the wall closest to you. If several walls are at an equal distance, choose one, and then increase the swarm threat by one. We can place that gold right here in the wall. If we try and mine here, so use one of those pickaxes to essentially place one of those small tokens down there, when we do that, we'd then be able to pick this up and we'd have three gold. That means we could actually do a resupply action. Or we could overclock all three of our secondary weapons. <laughs> all good. What isn't good is our swarm threat is increased by one. Okay, it is now back to our scout. We need to determine if this is one of those flowers. So what we're going to do for our first action is move one, two, three. We're then going to take that free action that we can do whenever we move and attack that Mactera spawn. This may not be a good idea, but we are going to spend both of our ammo so that we get to roll two dice and we get that free reroll so that we can essentially guarantee we kill that thing. However, that means we're out of ammo for our primary weapon. Uh, we'll roll them up. Oh man, one die would have been enough. That was two damage. Well, this thing is gone. We've taken it out. That was great. That was action number one. Action number two, we'll move here. Let's flip this over. Oh, it's a loot bug. What we can do is use a mining action. Or it's called farming. So if we roll one of these, we can actually use that to pick up one gold and then roll the loot die to potentially pick up a nitra or a gold. We are dwarves, right? It's too hard for us to pass that up. So at movement two and three, we're going to move here. And then our third action, we're going to try and collect some of this. We're going to give this a roll, 
Can you see that? That's a one. So we are going to use that for the loot bug because that guarantees us one gold. And then let's see if we can get a nitra or another gold. So we'll roll this one up. Oh, nothing. Bummer. Bummer. Oh, well, we still have a gold. That's our third gold we'll put in the mule. Oh, no. We just drew the creature pile up. This is a game changer. Place this card on top of the swarm deck. When the next swarm activates, discard this card and draw two swarm cards instead of one, placing all creatures from both cards before activating them. <laughs> so that's, uh, in the future, it's going to be brutal. It's our gunner's turn next. His first action, he's going to move. One, two, three. His second action, we're going to do a resupply action. This means we can spend three nitra or gold, whichever combination of that we have. We have three gold, and we're going to draw a supply card, and then we can place down the cargo pod. So I'm going to lose all three of the gold in here. This will mean, though, that we can place this cargo pod anywhere we'd like adjacent to a dwarf. And we have, we can put three health on here, one secondary ammo on here, and eight primary ammo on here. Oh, that's cool. We then can place this awesome looking cargo pod anywhere on the board. I'm going to put it right next to our gunner. Although this looks somewhat large, it does not block line of sight, just so you know. For an action, as long as you're adjacent to that cargo pod, you can interact with it and grab as much ammo and health as you would like, filling up your slots to the full. <laughs> Pretty awesome. We have that next to us. I love that because I am thinking next time we can maybe do some unloading. For this time, though, I think we're just going to try and do some landscaping. So we'll roll the die up for that. We've got one. We're going to place one of these here. So that way we now can attack through this area. There's a pebble in my boot. You take time to empty your boot and find a lump of gold. Collect one gold, but increase the swarm threat by one. I'll take that. We're back to having one gold in the mule, and we are one away from having a double swarm. Yes, a double swarm. <laughs> okay, it's the engineer's turn. Our engineer is going to play his rock and stone card, rock and stone forever. All dwarves can roll and use the pickaxe die. This does not take an action. He could have done this any time, but I've got a plan. We'll roll for our engineer first. He got one of the pickaxes. He will use that to be able to grab this gold here. And that will also place one of these down. And that wasn't an action, which is awesome because that's going to allow him to move around this stalagmite. Our scout also will roll. He can collect one of the nitra here, and we'll collect this one with that pickaxe roll. Our first action then, we'll throw this incendiary grenade at the uh, spitball infector. We can do that because it's a grenade, so we can throw it over the stalagmite. We get to roll two yellow dice. He has no resistance against that fire, hoping that we can do as much damage as we can. This thing has five health. It's kind of a lot. We just dealt three out of the five damage to it. I like that. Action two, we're going to move. We'll move one here. That allows us to flip this one up. <gasps> That's the barley bulb, and that can get us another rock and stone card. So definitely our second movement. We're going to pick that up and discard it. Let's grab a rock and stone card. We have rock on. Choose another dwarf to carry out a ranged attack action. Cool. For our third action, we'll grab one of the gold that's in the mule, and we're going to use it to overclock our weapon. This will mean we'll go from being able to roll one die to two dice, and it's a free action. So why don't we do that? We're going to do that probably twice. We're going to do one right now, hitting that uh, plant creature. We'll roll two dice for that free attack. Both of those hit. That means we'll deal one more damage. And then I will use the last ammo. And if I can get two hits here, I take that guy out and I get another rock and stone card. Come on. There's two hits. This guy's gone. <laughs> That was awesome. Thank you, Engineer, just taking him out. That guy is brutal. Getting rid of him is awesome. Now let's see what rock and stone card we get. We have We Are Unbreakable. Play it any time to reroll any of the uh, creature dice. We have Tough Spot. You spot a lost ammo crate that was left behind on an earlier mission. Unfortunately, it's surrounded by jagged razor sharp crystals. We have an option here. 
If we're not knocked over, we can lose one health to get the ammo crate. Fully restock a weapon of your choice. <gasps> we can fully restock our free attack action uh, weapon. Yeah, we're going to do that. We'll lose one health for that. That'll put us down to only three health, but then we'll have a fully stocked secondary weapon that's overclocked. And don't forget, because it is overclocked, we can fill this all the way to the top. So we have five ammo for our free attack semi-automatic weapon. <laughs> <gasps> That's awesome. Okay, now we're back to our scout. The first thing our scout is going to do is move one, two, three. Remember, he can go over the deep pits, no problem. He's now adjacent to this uh, crate. He's going to spend his second action to grab five, one, two, three, four, five, out of the eight of the primary ammo here so he can load up his weapon because remember his weapon was totally empty he's also going to grab all the health that's on there too so now he's at full health so he'll have full ammo and full health now this might seem kind of crazy but for our third action we're just going to move here I'm actually thinking of having him break into the main cave. The reason for that, the Praetorian has no resistance against armor piercing weapons. And he's got that really good weapon that he can use. So I'm thinking of having, actually having him break into there while the other two deal with all the enemies down here. And then hopefully he can take it out, grab that last X, uh, pickup token, and then get out of here. Our event card is fast critters. We would have to increase our swarm threat by one which would make another swarm, and it's going to be a double swarm. So I think I'm going to do something. Our scout will play for Carl. Play at any time, lose one health, so he's going to go back down to four, but then discard the current event card and ignore the effects. Speaking of which, it's now the gunner's turn. First action, he's going to grab the last three of the primary ammo and one secondary, because that's exactly what he can hold. That means this cargo pod has been fully used. We'll discard the card and remove it from the board. And then what we'll do for action two, we're going to move one, two, three over here. Action three, we're then going to try and take out this brood nexus. Now it has five health and is resistant to bullet shots, but I still think it's worth it. We've got a fully loaded weapon. We're going to spend our first ammo grabbing three dice. We're definitely within five. One, two, three, four. Yeah, five health. Oh man, this is this is gonna use all of our ammo. But if we can get rid of that, this thing spawns grunts like nobody's business. The simple fact that we do not have any out yet is just the testament to how much I want to kill it before it starts doing that. <laughs> so let's roll our dice. Let's see what we get. Oh, we get nothing on that first one. Okay, totally airballed. Second one. Remember, we can do successive attacks. We're just lighting it up. We need to do five damage. I don't think there's a chance. That's only gonna be one damage. Is this worth it? I'm still doing it. We're using our third ammo. Remember, we only have five. <gasps> We're going for broke. We're going for broke. That is another damage. Oh my gosh, that's only two damage. Uh, we'll use ammo number four. Was this a good idea? Probably not. Well, let's see. We could still kill it if we can get two hits on one of these. So we need to have all three hit one time. And that's it. That's three of them hitting there. So that'll be two more damage. So that's four damage to it. And then we will spend our final ammo. <sighs> We're going to spend that final ammo right here, rolling three dice. If we get one more hit, that thing is toast. But we actually need to get two successes to, to take it out. Oh, come on. I believe in the dice. I believe There it is. One, two, and actually we got three right there. Uh, so since we have three, what we can do is go one. We can put this one in that space. We, oh, no, we're too far away. I was thinking we can maybe hit this guy for one damage, but we can't. That's still okay. We took out this guy. Unfortunately, he still gets to activate when he's destroyed. So what that means is he'll roll two of these creature dice. For any exclamation points, a grunt is going to show up where he was. We're going to roll. We have no exclamation points. Oh, my gosh. That is the gunner for you. Just do, 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 taking him down. All of his ammo spent, though. Every last bit. But worth it. We're all cheering for him. After that awesome turn, we now have to draw an event card. And we're going to have swarm threat increased by one. It will trigger a swarm. And it's going to be a double swarm. We'll move our swarm marker here. And now the pain ensues. Well, this could be a quick game. We have an oppressor showing up at exit two facing the nearest target. And that's not all. We'll have one Goo Bomber at exit two and one Menace at exit one. And then place one Grunt at every exit. So both of them. And then activate all creatures. 
<gasps> Ouch. Here we have the oppressor. Yeah, I think that this thing is ginormously amazing. This is the large mini in the game. And this thing is going to come and eat us alive. Here we have the Menace. I love how this one looks. I think Bill did a great job. This is also from the expansion. You've already seen the Goo Bombers as well. The Goo Bomber over here has two health. He's really hard to hit with a pickaxe, two resistance. This is the Menace. He is only resistant to a bullet attack, so I'm not even going to have this to try and take a shot at it. We do have two Grunts. That Grunt is definitely within range three, so we can try and see if it takes that Grunt out. And it does. Do you see that? So that Grunt is toast. The Goo Bomber, one, two, three, is within range three, so let's see. Oh, yes! Does one damage to the Goo Bomber. Woohoo! The Oppressor, I don't even think I need to roll. The Oppressor has two resistance to bullets. <laughs> <gasps> but there is a little grunt here, and so when that activates, because that will activate first, it's moving towards our dwarves. Uh, we do get to take a shot at it, and we did take it out, so at least we took out the two grunts. That's great. Let's now walk through which enemies will activate next. So I believe the Mactera spawn is next. It's definitely within range three of our gunner, so it's going to attack our gunner. If we get an exclamation point, that will stun our gunner, and our gunner will only have one action next round instead of the normal three. So we'll grab this die. We'll roll it up. Okay, it's just one damage to the gunner. That's the first damage to the gunner. He can totally take it. He's down to four health. Next to go is the oppressor. The oppressor can move three, one, two. So it's definitely going to move one, two, getting itself closer to the sentry gun since that was the closest thing and it's going to eat it for breakfast <laughs> uh, very soon uh, but not yet the goo bomber will go next and i believe it can go one two three coming over here oh my gosh this is just ripe for dropping some sort of grenade and then this menace is right next to the sentry gun so he is going to attack he rolls just one single die and how the menace works Okay, let's just see. Okay, that sentry gun is so gone. So dead. Did you even see that? No, you didn't. But here you go. I uh, rolled that. That's so gone. That sentry gun did its duty, though. The Glyphid Menace will attack with a dangerous acid spit. When the Glyphid Menace takes any damage, losing health from an attack, it hides for a short while, meaning it cannot be attacked again by any means until the end of that turn. And then it resurfaces. Uh, the Goo Bomber actually will throw goo all around the character that it attacks. And if you move into that goo, you just remove it and you have to stop your movement. Really, really annoying. The Oppressor has a total of 7 health, 1 range, movement of 3. Look, if you roll the exclamation point, it knocks you down and deals you damage. Look at that resistance. Even with armor piercing, it's got 1 armor piercing resistance. There's a lot of words here, but basically that resistance is only in the front. If you can get behind it, none of those resistance count. Yeah, so it says resistance ignored when attacked from behind. So I got to get behind that thing. I just don't have any idea how I'm going to do that. The engineer is going to spend his first action putting out two of these. I think he can see both of those ones. I don't think he can see this third one, which is a bummer. I'd like him to put all three of the platforms out, but I don't think he can. Uh, that's action one. Action two, you know what he's going to do? Run. Run, run, run from that oppressor. Run away. <laughs> One, he's going to step into here. Let's see. We have, oh, so this upgrade, you can use either primary or secondary ammo for that uh, weapon. So I'm actually going to put that on our uh, secondary weapon so we can potentially put primary ammo there if ever we do get another cargo pod since that's free attacks. After that second movement, we'll move here for movement three, which I believe means we can reveal this one. This one means, oh, this one means that you can ignore all resistances. Oh my gosh, do I want to, do I want to give that to somebody else or do I want to pick that up? If I gave that, but we need another cargo drop. You know what? I am totally going to leave that for the gunner. <laughs> I'm going to leave that for the gunner. I got an idea. We are going to use one of the five ammo that we have with our secondary weapon for our free attack against that Mactero spawn. It has two health. Oh, we just dealt one damage to it. Let's do our second one. And come. Oh, no. Uh, let's do our third one. We got to kill that thing. Good thing it's free attacks. There it is. So. After three ammo wasted, this guy's taken out. We just need less enemies on the board. For my third action, I'll move one, two, and three. That means I can reveal this. That is one of the blooms that we need. That'll be the second one. We only need one more, and it's in the cave that we have to go into to kill the Praetorian. 
<gasps> of course it's there. We have Aerial Surprise. Something awful swoops out of the darkness and slashes at you before disappearing back into the gloom. Lose one health or throw yourself to the ground to avoid getting hit. Ignore this if you're already knocked down. I'm going to lose the health. I don't want to be knocked down. That means I'll only have one action next turn. So I'm down to three health. We're now to the scout's turn, and the question becomes, what do we want to do here? Do we want to try and help out? <laughs> We've got an oppressor over here. I feel like we need to help out, but we do also need to complete our objectives. But yeah, I think, I think I've got to help out at least a little bit. I'm going to spend one action and drop one of my flares down here. That means we get a free reroll against any of those enemies that are adjacent or in that space. Okay, action two, I'm going to use my secondary weapon, and that's my experimental plasma igniter. You haven't probably seen that since the beginning. That's this card. We get to roll two yellow dice and then pick one to keep. We'll roll up our two dice, and we get a one or a two. Two damage. That'll be enough to take out this goo guy. He only has two health, so he's gone. Last action we'll take, we'll try and landscape here. Gosh, I'm missing that driller. Okay, I normally play with the driller, but I wanted to try some different ones. Man, it's it's brutal having to take an action to do that, and you have to take an action to move there before you can continue uh, drilling through the wall. <laughs> with a driller, you just take a step, take a step, take a step. It does stop your movement, but man, it's so nice to be able to just break through those walls. All right, let's draw an event card. Looks like we're having our mission-specific event. That means increase our spawn threat by one, and then activate all creatures. This will mean we're two away from another swarm. The oppressor will activate moving three, one, to always counting from the front because he is a two hex character he is here now adjacent to the gunner <laughs> look at that oh that gunner better run away this guy has a range of six but he can't see anyone he'll move here and stop he now has range to the scout next time he'll be able to attack the scout from right here it is now the gunner's turn and you know what he's going to do run one two three picking this up this means that his attacks will ignore all resistances. You know what he's putting that on. His a weapon that's fully out of ammo. So we need to get another cargo drop ASAP. I think we have just the way to do that. Moving through our uh, engineer for action two, we're going to pick up our second flower for movement two. And then movement three, we're going to move here. We're going to put this into our mule. That's two down. And now what we can do is we can roll our pickaxe. And as long as we get one, which you can just barely see, but we do have one, thank goodness. If I didn't get one, I was going to cry a little bit. We will get our third nitra. Now someone can call a supply down, and that can be what we use to save ourselves from that oppressor. Ouch! Movement on the K ceiling releases some minerals. A piece of nitra drops on your head. Good thing you have a thick skull. We get to collect a nitra. That'll be our fourth one. For our engineer's turn, the first action we're going to do, giving up three nitra for another cargo drop. We need some more goods. This one will have seven primary, four secondary, and one health. We are certainly going to be dropping this right here <laughs> because then action two, we're going to interact with that, grabbing three of the secondary ammo since our weapon is uh, three, three fifths depleted. So we'll fill that back up. We'll also grab the one health. So that was action two. That'll put us up to four health and a full secondary weapon. And then our third action, we're gonna go for these stalagmites. I'm gonna roll this up. Okay, I took care of this one. We'll remove it from the board and then let's see if we get any gold or nitra. No, I never seem to find anything in those stalagmites. They just, they got nothing in them. The reason that I'm doing that is I'm thinking I might burrow a hole through here to get back to the dropship. As long as our scout can take out that Praetorian, we can just sneak out this way while that oppressor slowly comes this way to try and take us down. Unfortunately, we have their closing in. Increase swarm threat by one. That will not trigger a swarm, so then activate all creatures. However, we will be one away from a swarm. I'm not entirely sure about this, but I feel like it would make sense. This is going to attack first, followed by the oppressor, because the oppressor is definitely going to move up towards the scout, because the scout's only two away. But then this can't attack, so I feel like this should go first. And I don't know with the expansion when these ones are supposed to activate, if it's at the end of the other board. So that's just how I'm going to play. It makes the most sense to me. So I'm going to roll this die up, and we get one damage to the scout. That'll put the scout down to three health. And then the suppressor is going to move one, two, getting right to here, right in the scout's face. 
I had a great plan all set up as long as this oppressor would continue to follow my gunner and my engineer, but they got too scared and ran too far away. <gasps> and now this guy's chasing down the scout. That's not good. The scout is now going to run away. The scout's going to move here for one because the scout's not prepared. Action two, we're going to roll this die up. Okay, we get one, so we can place one of these here. That's action two. And we're doing that because action three, we're going to run away. One, two, and then three, we're going to pick this up. Ooh, range plus one. We'll put that on our main weapon. I'm going to make that oppressor chase me down. <laughs> oh no, a slasher emerges. Place a slasher on an empty ground space adjacent to you. Dwarves within attack range of the slasher each receive a free attack, a reaction attack against it. If it survives, it attacks you. I quickly burrow a hole, jump away from that oppressor, and guess what shows up? <laughs> One of these guys with that thing in my face. Oh my gosh, I love these minis. Okay, let's see. What's my range? One, two, three, four, five. I only have a range of four over there. And a range of two. Nope. So that slasher just gets a free attack on the scout. That will be a two dice attack. Let's see. Oh, two damage. The scout's down to one health. All oh, this could be bad. Wait, never mind. Let's play this. I think we might actually get out of here alive. Distribute up to two health from the general supply to other dwarves. So I'm going to give two health back to the scout. Speaking of which, it's the gunner's turn. First action. He's going to grab one, two, uh, three four and five he's gonna fill up his main weapon that's action one action two one two three one two three four five does he have line of sight he definitely does action three we're gonna start using this ammo and taking down that oppressor remember first of all we're attacking from his butt so he actually has none of the resistances because he was chasing that scout around but we also have on our weapon that we would ignore all resistances we're spending one ammo we need seven damage here first roll three damage <gasps> that was a great shot second one I love how we can just do this over and over again. This I can see why my son loves this one. I've never played him. My son's always played him. I can see why this is so much fun. Second attack. Oh, that's five damage. Okay, third one. We only need two more. Three ammo just spent. And let's see. There it is. Oh, my gosh. The oppressor oppresses no more. He is gone. That was awesome. And you can imagine we'll get a rock and stone card for that. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Reroll any number of range attack dice. We do still have a slasher in range. Now, I don't think this menace is in line of sight. Yeah, I think it would be uh, it'd be tough to say that we have line of sight, I think, on this one. We definitely do on the slasher. Two health, but one resistance to the bullets. Do we spend? We only have two ammo left, but it's likely I'm going to have a swarm. Uh, I'm going to see if I can do it because if I can save my scout, it might be worth it. So I'm going to roll three. If I can get three hits here, I take that slasher out right of the way. Oh, I got two hits. Okay, I'm going to spend the last ammo. I'm going to be out of ammo and I'm going to do the last shot. So I've dealt one damage to that slasher. This potentially to take him out. Oh, I didn't do it. I only got one hit. Oh, so the slasher has one damage. Oh. <laughs> I was so close, but now I'm out of ammo again. Okay, I got a little greedy. Yep, and uh, the karma gods are getting to me. Not again. Place a grunt at exit 1 and 3. So only at exit 1, but all creatures will activate. 1 is right here. The grunt will activate first, moving 3, 1, 2, uh, 3. The slasher, unfortunately, is going to activate next, going for the scout. We'll roll the two dice up here. Oh, no. We have an exclamation point. With the slasher, that means the scout's been knocked down. So the scout has two health, has now been knocked down. He'll have to spend two actions to stand back up unless the engineer can get over there and help him up first. However, I'd say this menace has straight line of sight on the scout. He rolls one die. Let's see what he gets. He gets an exclamation point, which for him is just another point of damage. So the scout's down to one health. <laughs> We might be losing a, a dwarf soon here. Our engineer may not be able to get over to our scout to help him stand up, but he can certainly help him with clearing out some enemies. So he's going to move three here. Let's do some free attacks, shall we? First free attack is against that grunt. All we need is one. We got two. Grunt is gone. I love those grunts. They're so easy to take out. 
Next one, we're going to do the slasher. This is all free attacks, remember, because we've got that weapon. Uh, and we overclocked it, so we're rolling two dice. That's our semi-automatic. We need two hits here. We only got one. Uh, we're going to use our third one, and we're going to do it again. We're going to hit him. Come on, hit him. We need two. There it is. One and one. That's two. That slasher is gone. Then for action two, we're going to move one, two right here. I really wish that I could go through those deep pits, but I have to spend an action, and I won't have enough to be able to help our scout, which is such a bummer. Uh, our third action, I think I'm going to use some uh, primary ammo. I'm going to use my grenade launcher, and I'm going to launch a grenade at this thing. Uh, I do get a, a free reroll because it's still sitting on that flare, which is nice. So we'll roll this. Uh, is it one of the sides? One of the sides does two damage. So we got two. Ch oh my gosh, that's two damage. Right there, we just blew this thing out. <laughs> Oh, I, this game, you guys, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's just so fun. It's tense. You know, we're likely going to get another swarm, and we're going to get swarmed by enemies again, and the scout's going to get one action because I couldn't get him to stand up. You know, and we still have to go into that spot, yet we've had so many epic moments in this game. I love it. Like I said, we're going to increase swarm threat by one. That will trigger a swarm. We're definitely starting to run out of time. We'll place three grunts at exit one and one exploder at exit two. We've spawned all of our creatures. First, the grunt will move one, two. This one will move one, two. It's trying to get closer. One, two, and this one will move one, two, three. The scout who is knocked over will have to spend two actions to stand back up. Now what I could do, it could be incredibly risky, <laughs> and I could connect ourselves to this cave. That means we're gonna have more grunts and a Praetorian in here but that's going to be the last thing that we need to do i also could run up there so i get close to that uh final pickup token i could also throw a grenade i do have the electro electrocution grenade you know what maybe i'll do that yeah i think we can toss this throwing it at the grunts i think that's not a bad idea remember with grenades you can toss over people so i believe i can do this one two three i'm gonna hit this whole area i'm just rolling one of these come on hit come on yes that'll take out all three of these grunts i also want to mention i should have picked this up at the beginning of my turn that flare would no longer be on the board our event then is i hate bugs so do I. Place a grunt at exit one, all creatures activate. That means a grunt will show up here and just go one, two, three, and then this is going to move one, two. Who's the most recent to activate? Yeah, that would be the um, engineer, one, two. Our gunner will activate next. He will do one action just by moving one space closer. We're going to connect the new cave setup. I'd love to attack, but I don't have any ammo left. I could attack with my uh, secondary weapon. I don't think it's worth it. I have a plan. We're going to roll, and oh, we've got two pickaxes. Well, I don't know if that's really worth using that second one for anything other than maybe just setting this here, and then we'll set this one here. But that means we've now connected ourselves to the cave of the Praetorian. The Praetorian will be placed here. We'll have two grunts, one placed here, and another one placed right here. <laughs> oh boy, and we only have one action left. With that final action, we're going to put down our shield and we're going to place it right here, right in front of us. We can place it in either our space or an adjacent space. And now no enemies can attack us because we're adjacent to that. And no enemies can actually move adjacent to this as well, which is so cool. But they'll still try and move towards it. They just won't be able to do that. And then that will be discarded at the beginning of our next turn. The next time then we grab anything from a cargo pod, we can actually get that back. But this means that that Praetorian, which by the way, <laughs> I think the Praetorian, let me check quick, it rolls only one die. However, if it gets an exclamation point, it actually will hit you twice with it. Ouch. Our event is, it nearly got me. Choose a ground space adjacent to you. If it's empty, place a stalagmite on it. If it contains a creature, do not place the stalagmite, but deal one damage to the creature instead. Gosh, that would have been awesome. Increase swarm threat by one. We'll place that stalagmite right here. And our swarm threat is getting close to the end of our track. We're running out of time. It's our engineer who's next. Our engineer will use one of the two remaining ammo for our secondary weapon to get a free attack. We're going to attack this grunt. Oh, let's see. Oh, that grunt's so gone. 
Uh, we'll take that grunt out, no problem. That was not even an action. I think then what we're going to do is do some pickaxing. We'll roll this up. Oh, we got nothing for our first action. God, I hate when that happens. Let's try it again for our second action. We'll roll and we still get nothing. <laughs> okay, at this point, let's just try it again for our third. Uh, we get one. Okay, we can either take out the stalagmite or we can try and attack the exploder, but then we take some damage. However, that exploder is going to... Yeah, let it explode itself. Instead, we're going to take out this stalagmite with that, and then we get to roll the loot die. Maybe we can get something good. Oh, we got one piece of gold. That means we have two gold and two of the Apaco blooms. Our event is, I said, stop spitting. Activate all creatures. The grunts would try and activate. They try and get close to that gunner, but they can't. So that's all they're going to do. The exploder here is going to explode. And then we're going to roll one of these dice. And it's going to hit the, oh, it hits the engineer for two damage. That is just mean. And then the Praetorian will move a total of three spaces. One, two, three towards the gunner. With the hit the engineer just sustained, we're down to two total health for him. We're going to move to the scout now. He will do a move action. One, two, three, moving here. Then he is going to try and dig his way through on the other side. That is awesome. So that was action two. We've now connected on this side. And you know what that means? We're going to do for our third action, one, two, and start running. Start running. And we know this is the uh, Apoka Bloom that we need. We now have all three. We just need to defeat that Praetorian and get back to the dropship. We have Vantage Point. You approach a sheer tower of rock. Being a good dwarf, you feel compelled to climb it and get a good view. If not knocked over, look at the top card of either the event or swarm deck. You may then choose whether to, uh, or not to shuffle that deck. Either way, increase the swarm threat by one. I decided to look at the top card of the event deck, and it's a cave leech attack. The only thing that I like about this card is it does not increase the swarm threat, so I actually think I'm going to keep this one on top of the deck. As you can see, we are very much running out of time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven more times forward, and we lose the game. We're back to the gunner. That means his shield is gone. That was great to use, but now until we do a cargo load action, we will not have that again. So I think our first thing we're going to do is we're going to try and mine that stalagmite. You might be asking, why are you doing that, Colin? Well, I really need some ammo. <laughs> I need some ammo for my armor piercing weapon. And in order to do that, I need three gold or three nitro or a combination. I have two gold. So I just need one more. Maybe I can get one from here. So I'm going to roll this up. That's one. So that means we can take this off. And now we just need a gold or a nitro on the loot die. That's all we need. Gold or nitro on the loot die. That is a nitra. That'll work. I'll grab that, put that into the mule. All we have to do is kill that Praetorian. So because of that, I think I'm going to run. I'm going to go one, two, three, and uh, do I just stand here and do the call of the cargo pod there? I don't want to get too far away from my dwarven uh, friends. Plus, we've got these tunnels here and here. They're going to continue to spawn do I want to go one more? No, you know what? I think I'm going to stop there. I am going to use the two gold and the one nitro that I have in here somewhere in there. There we go. So I'm going to discard all three of these for my third action, and I'm going to get a new cargo pod card. Now, there is one that's still out with a couple ammo left in it. We'll just discard that and draw a new one. This one will have six primary ammo, three secondary, and three health in it. We'll then grab our cargo pod and place it right here so it's adjacent to us. The other good thing about us not getting too far away from our dwarves is because we know <laughs> what's coming up with an event, and that's that cave leech. It states a cave leech attacks you from above. Dwarves within attack range of your space, that would be the engineer, uh, receive a free reaction attack. If they can deal one damage, they take out the cave leech and we don't have to worry about it. Otherwise, we have to roll two dice, suffer damage, and potentially get knocked over. Our engineer will attack with his grenade launcher going down to only one ammo, but we'll roll this up. Oh, two damage. Totally took out that cave leech before it could do anything to us. Sweet. Okay, now we are moving to the uh, engineer's turn. His first action will be to grab all three of the secondary ammo because he loves his secondary weapon with free attacks, and he will rearm his secondary weapon. So he'll have four out of the five filled. His second action, he is going to use his platform gun. 
Now, this does look like it would block line of sight, but it actually doesn't. So we can place one here. We can take one from one of the other spaces if we've used all of them, which we have. So that's number two. And I think we're going to take this one and put it here because those are, we'd all have line of sight to those three. That should help us be able to get to back to that drop ship as soon as possible. <laughs> and then our third action, I think we're just going to run. I think we're going to run. We're going to go one, two, three. And then that way, we can hopefully be the target for any of these enemies so the gunner can focus on that Praetorian. And unfortunately, we have some unsettling rumblings, so we're going to increase our swarm threat by one. This will trigger a swarm. Are we going to be able to do this? I don't know. We have the scout with only one health, engineer with only two health, gunner with four health. <laughs> All right, let's see what our swarm is. Oh no, we have another Praetorian showing up. Place a Praetorian at exit one facing the nearest target. Activate all creatures. <laughs> well, I have a feeling this is going to go south quickly. We'll place the brother or sister of the other Praetorian right here. We'll then activate enemies starting with the grunts. This grunt will move one, two, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So they're tied. He is uh, more recently out, was activated. No, wait, the gunner was more recently activated. Yeah, because the um, the scout is next. So this uh, grunt will go one, two, three. And then, unfortunately, this guy's going to go one, two, three, coming in here. And this one's going to move right next to <sighs> the engineer. If we look here, the Praetorian is very resistant to fire and to guns and to pickaxes, but not to armor piercing ammo. So for the scout's turn, I actually think we're going to do some attacking. We're going to spend two ammo to do this, but we get to roll two dice and we get to apply both of them. And we're going to attack that Praetorian. Remember that grunts do not block line of sight. We also get a free reroll on this. So let's roll them up. Oh, I'm not going to reroll that. That's three damage. I don't know if you can see that. I should probably do them a little closer. Three damage. That's half the health. These Praetorian have six total health. So that was one action. Let's do the second one. Spending two more primary ammo. We're only going to have one ammo left. Grabbing the two dice. We'll roll them up. That's three damage. Oh my gosh. That's going to take out the Praetorian that we need to take out. So now all we need to do is get back to that drop ship. We do also get to draw a rock and stone card. We have nothing will stop us now. Choose another dwarf to immediately carry out a move action, including any dwarf specific benefits. <gasps> okay, we've done two actions. We're actually going to use this for free for the engineer. Once you complete the objectives, you're going to flip over your drop ship. That's all we've got to do is get back to there. And we're going to have our engineer run. One, two, three. <laughs> he does not want to be by that Praetorian. Our scout will then use his final primary ammo. He will attack. Now he has to choose one or the other for these dice. However, he does get a reroll. Uh, re doesn't matter. He just wanted to take out this grunt so he doesn't take any damage from it. That was his three actions. Totally worth it. We have add a loot bug from the general supply to an empty ground space that's not adjacent to any dwarves. Increase swarm threat by one. At this point, who even cares? I'm not going for that. I'm running. We'll place that right here. We'll move our swarm threat one more over. Okay, it is now our gunner's turn. I'm still not sure if this is worth it or not, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to spend one action and I'm going to resupply from here. I'm grabbing five of the six primary ammo. That also means I get my shield back too. And my weapon is loaded to full. You ready? Don't forget our powered minigun can ignore all resistances. That is the whole reason why we're doing this. We're now going to attack that Praetorian. This will be action two, spending one ammo. We'll roll them up. That's three damage. <gasps> uh, we're still going to stay in the same action. We're going to spend another ammo. Remember, they have a total of six health. So hopefully we can do this pretty quick. That's going to move and that's going to move. Let's see. We'll roll them up over here. Okay, that's two. Can you see this one? You can't. So that's two damage. Uh, that's a total of five. So we're going to spend our third ammo, hopefully, to take him out. <sighs> come on, come on. We just need one. Oh, yeah. One, two, and three. This Praetorian. So the Praetorian and the Praetorian's brother both gone. We're going to draw another rock and stone card. We have a lock and load. Give one ammo of both types to another dwarf. Cool. I do think we're going to continue to shoot. We're going to spend another ammo. So that's four out of the five. Didn't I tell you that I run out of ammo really fast with this guy? <laughs> we're going to try and take out that grunt. So there's no enemies on the board. Okay, I've got three hits. 
Wow, we just annihilated that guy. So that was two total actions, and we just took out a Praetorian and a Grunt. We still have a third. With our third, run. One, two, uh, three. We're trying to get ourselves over to the uh, exit, or I should say drop ship, as fast as possible. We have our mission-specific event, which just means we're going to increase the swarm threat by one because there's no enemies on the board. We are now one space away from another swarm. The engineer is next to go. The first thing he will do is spend his final primary ammo. So he has no grenades left, but he's going to use that to place out that sentry gun again. Then action two, he will move one, two, three. He's now on the drop ship. This drop ship has a shield. No enemies can cross it or attack it. And we can actually attack from here if we want. Uh, but we need to get all dwarves back here to win. If we don't, though, because we have one back here, we at least have a partial win of this game. Sweet. Third action, nothing I'm going to do. I'm just going to stay there. We'll draw an event card. And we draw bugs, bugs, bugs. Increase swarm threat by two, but no further than the next swarm space. That came at the right time because we'll only move once, but we will have another swarm. What's that buzzing sound? Place three grunts at exit one and one Mactera spawn at exit two. We've spawned the three grunts and one of the Mactera spawns, but don't forget we have the sentry gun. So first for this grunt, dead. Oh my gosh, getting out that sentry gun. Second one, right here, not gone. Oh no, that one's going to be able to attack. This one, let's see, gone. Yes, two of them gone. However, this grunt will attack our gunner. Rolling one of these black dice, dealing one damage. He's down to three health. Next, the sentry gun will try and attack the Mactera spawn, but that thing has two health, so it won't kill it. Uh, we did get one damage, so we'll place one by it. But the Mactera spawn will be able to attack, and we'll roll a black die for that. And it's blank! It's blank! Okay, that could have stunned him. If it had stunned him, then he wouldn't be able to do any movement. Well, he'd get one action, but he wouldn't get to the dropship his next turn, and that could be really bad. Now it's the scout's turn. The scout is just looking to run. He's going to go one, two, three. He is one, two, three, within range four of this grunt, and he can free attack. Now his primary weapon, all ammo is spent. Actually, all of our primary ammo for all of our dwarves are spent. This game is amazing. But I do have secondary ammo. I can use that and do the attack. We still have two secondary ammo, so we'll roll two of the yellow dice, picking one. And we only have one health. And we have zero ammo on our primary weapon. We'll grab two, give him a roll. Yeah, that definitely will take out the grunt. No problem. That was action one. Action two. One, two, three. Action three, thanks to the gunner, one. Unfortunately, though, two, three, we're one away from the dropship. We're so close. We're so close. Our engineer will play rock on. Choose another dwarf to carry out a ranged attack action. We're going to choose the gunner because he can use his secondary weapon. He's within range two, rolling two of those armor piercing uh, ammo. The reason I'm doing that and not just taking the free attack with the scout is because that attack is with fire, and unfortunately the Mactera spawn is resistant to fire. This will be an attack with two of these. We get to choose one. I don't care which one. This only has two health. Second attack, it's gone. Our event is Goo from above. Place a Goo Bomber at exit one. Increase the swarm threat by one. The Goo Bomber will be placed right here. That thing is brutal because that can make movement really hard. We do not want to have to deal with that, but fortunately it does not activate. We just increase the swarm threat. We are so close to the end of this game. Oh my gosh. I almost forgot the sentry gun is right here within range three. We have this Goo Bomber showing up so we can roll and we dealt a damage to it. That's amazing because now it is the gunner's turn. We are within range two. You see that? Range two of that Goo Bomber. We're going to turn here. We're going to use our second to last ammo on our secondary weapon, that jury rigged boomstick. We'll roll two of these armor piercing uh, dice. We have to choose one. Oh, we could have taken them out. Anyways, that will take out this goo bomber. So no one is going to get stuck. That's what I wanted to see. We have two actions left one, two, three. I think that this is supposed to be here. There you go. And then one, two, we're now on the drop ship. So the only one we're waiting for is the scout. So close. We have their closing in. Increase the swarm threat by one. This means we get another swarm one more time. This moves up and we run out of time. 
We have grunts, grunts everywhere. Place two grunts at each tunnel exit. Activate all creatures. We have our four grunts on the board, but guess what? One, two, three, and one, two, three. This sentry gun could be amazing. We're going to have it attack this one first, and it's not dead. Then we're gonna have it attack this one second, and it is dead. Okay, half, half of them dead on that side. We'll then have it turn, and it's going to attack over there. We'll start with the closer one. Uh, doesn't hit that one. Gosh, doesn't hit the closer one. Farther one, doesn't hit the farther one. Oh, no. All right, this one's going to move here. It's right next to the sentry gun. This one's going to move here. It's right next to the sentry gun. And this one is going to move here. Yeah, that sentry gun is going to die very likely next turn. But it's still somewhat saving us. <laughs> okay, we're now with the engineer. The engineer has range five with his secondary weapon. He's got one, two, three, four ammo. One, two, three. You know what? We can maybe clear this. We can maybe clear this. We'll use one ammo. We'll attack this one. And we took this one out. Beautiful. Second ammo. We're going to take on this one. Oh, no. We've got, we've got a dwarf in the way. We can't see that. Let's see. We can attack this one at least. Uh, remember, none of this are actions. And this is a damage. So this one's gone. So we still haven't even taken an action. And really, at this point, I don't really want to take an action. I guess what I could do for action one, one, two... Then for free, attack that next grunt. Uh, yep, we took that grunt out. And then action two, we'll move back into the dropship. <laughs> okay, if you don't play with the semi-automatic weapon, I don't know why you don't, and you don't power it up. Overclocking that weapon is insane. <laughs> we'll then draw an event card, and if it has increasing the swarm threat by one, we lose by one space. And unfortunately it does. Increase swarm threat by one. I cannot believe it one space away. Well, there you have it. That was Deep Rock Galactic. Do you see how much fun this is? <laughs> I had a blast. These dwarves going around taking out bugs like nobody's business. Look at, I mean, it's just so fun to see how we connected the different uh, cave spaces and all the different things that we found. We've got a cargo pod here. We have all these discs on the board. Here's our zip line that we used that almost got our scout back. Oh, I love this game. It's difficult for me to describe why I like it so much. I think it's because your actions are limited. It feels stressful with the enemies out there, but you can make smart decisions. But they're all small decisions, and a lot of it is based upon dice luck, which I'm okay with in this type of game. I also love all the different abilities of the characters. The Digger is one of my favorites. I love how he works too, but all of them were great. I mean, the Scout being able to run through these, uh, these deep pit spaces, putting out those flares, being able to do a free attack action, after moving yeah this just it's fun you guys it is such a fun game i cannot recommend this enough if you like this type of thing i mean obviously if you're a euro gamer this isn't for you but you're probably not watching this channel <laughs> uh, so if you're watching this channel i'm gonna tell you right now this is for you very likely <laughs> All right, thank you so much. I appreciate anyone who stayed for the whole game because that was not short, but it was worth it. And I want to just say a huge shout out to Bill. Again, the minis look so amazing and just bring the immersion into the game. I mean, look at these guys. They just look amazing on the table when you're fighting them. When that oppressor showed up, I'm going to pull him out again. This guy looks fantastic. Look at that. Oh my gosh. I you know. When you're going to take him on, you can just feel it with that paint job. And the miniatures are really nice. And this mule, it looks great. Okay, I'm I'm going to stop gushing. It's just, it's hard for me to describe to you how much fun I had in that playthrough. I want to keep playing. <laughs> that's how I feel. All right, uh, that's enough. Thank you so much. I'll catch you at the next stop. Hope to see you in some of our future playthroughs.